the one and only Elon Musk has bought Twitter today. So that's pretty big news. He plans on taking it private and, well, reinstating many of these people that have been banned from Twitter. People like Donald Trump, people like Alex Jones, people like Milo Yiannopoulos and Nick Fuentes. Um, now, is he really going to do that? I'm not so sure. Maybe. I know for one thing, people like Donald Trump don't even want to be on Twitter anymore because he has Truth Social and he's basically made a venture capitalist investment into that. And if he goes back on Twitter, that will basically negate his entire investment, entire project of Truth Social. So I don't think Donald Trump is coming back on Twitter, but maybe he will. Maybe he'll be forced to. Maybe he'll change his mind. He's a sporadic kind of guy. I don't know. But some are saying that, oh, Elon Musk is going to save free speech on Twitter. As a result of this, he is taking it private. It is 100% confirmed. It's going to be his company. He's going to be, I guess, kind of in full control of it at this point. $44 billion. They've come and they've sealed the deal. Uh, so you have executives that are really pissed off. You have workers at Twitter, uh, employees who are really mad. I'm sure there'll be an exodus from Twitter. And I'm actually going to make a prediction right now that, you know, I think Twitter and uh, the people in the somewhat upper echelons of Twitter, especially in the IT department, a lot of them probably don't like Elon Musk. And a lot of them probably have access to a lot of your personal information, your DMs, your, I think you have to give your phone number for Twitter, if I'm not mistaken, uh, your email address. And there's a real good possibility that they've doxed everybody in all of your locations because many people will have it connected into their location in their cell phone when they're posting on Twitter. So any anonymous accounts or non-anonymous accounts, you know, that have been posting from their home address or, you know, at their workplace, a place where they are commonly. I think uh, a lot of that information is stored at Twitter headquarters and at the IT department. And I have a feeling some of these people that end up le leaving Twitter as a result of this, especially if Musk doesn't stay, a lot of these people that are so-called fascist, evil, white supremacist extremists, um, you know, a lot of these psychotic cult members that are part of that woke ideology, they're going to probably dox half of Twitter. Uh, that's just my, <laughs> that's my uh, prediction. Um, you know, some of these employees. So we'll see about that. But we do have people on Twitter. Uh, some of these um, blue checkmark accounts saying that Twitter is going to uh, become a cesspool of uh, fascist politics now. <laughs> Like all of this stuff, just because good old Elon wants to make it free speech again. Um, now, they're also saying that they're going to uh, deactivate their Twitter account. You had, uh, let me see, it was The Verge that published this, how to deactivate your Twitter account. Look at the irony of this. You know, they're posting on Twitter from their blue check mark account, how to uh, deactivate your Twitter account. None of these people are going to deactivate their Twitter accounts. I'm calling it right now. None of them will. You might have some employees that leave Twitter, that work for Twitter and leave Twitter, but you're not going to have people deactivating their accounts. No way. It's just like how all these San Francisco liberals said they're going to move to Canada when Trump was elected and they didn't. So I think it's all BS. That's not going to happen. Now, I don't know about you guys, but either way, whether Twitter becomes a free speech haven or not, I'll still be using Gab and I'll still make it a major priority because I love Gab. And I think it's just a great platform. I actually think it has better usability than Twitter, maybe not on your smartphone because they don't have a, an app that uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the Play Store of Android or the Apple Store uh, hasn't banned, but it's really good. So please follow me on Gab at Press Reset Earth. And also, if you believe in my work, you want to contribute to the channel, you can uh, become a Patreon member. You can contribute anything from $1 to as much as you want uh, to help support the channel. And of course, I guess you can follow me on Twitter for now too. But my real question is, is this something that we can uh, trust in the long term is going to be actually beneficial for the human race? You know, I think Elon Musk... Man, I don't know. I don't trust the guy. Look, he wants to put a chip inside your brain. He, uh, you know, he has a lot of ambitions that run counterintuitive to a natural human evolution, human ascension into like a like a better species sort of thing. It, it really, it really is like a like a uh, like a divergent. Um, 
uh, future that he wants where people like merge with machine and get a chip, chip in their brain and get plugged into the metaverse. Just watch the movie The Matrix and you'll see exactly what this leads to, what he wants with Nero. Uh, what's it called? Um, <laughs> I talk about it all the time. What is it? What is it? The the, the chip thing. Nero. Oh my. You know. I I'm not. I'm okay. I haven't had my coffee. You, you know what? Hold on. This this will help. No, it didn't help. Someone just listed listed in the comment section. I know the name of the company. I just having a brain fart. Anyway, let's look at uh, Elon Musk and what he said about what he wants for Twitter. Um. So. He shared this three hours ago. Free speech is the be uh, bedrock of a functioning democracy, and Twitter is a digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated, said Musk. I also want to make Twitter better than ever by enhancing the product with new features, making the algorithms open source to increase trust, defeating spam bots, and authenticating all humans. Twitter has tremendous potential. I look forward to working with the company and community of users to unlock it. So a few things uh, to unravel here. Obviously, open source is nothing but good in my opinion. I think that's nothing but good. Free speech is nothing but good in my opinion. Question is, will he deliver? Only time will tell, of course. Um, I'm not necessarily saying he won't. Uh, uh, I actually think he will to some degree on those things. I really do. Um, if he's taking it private, I don't think he's going to just come out and say he's going to do this and not do it. That's not like Elon Musk. He's not a politician. But at the same time, what is the main concern that I'm concerned with here is the aspect uh, of this tweet saying the authentication of all humans. Now, what's that mean? Now, if that just means clicking a few boxes to make to, to prove you're not a robot, that's fine. I'm cool with that. But does that mean, you know, digital identity hooking into Twitter? And if it doesn't mean that now, does it mean that later? You know, oh, we want to better uh, authenticate humans in the future. You know, it might it might not be that right away. It might be just, oh, prove, uh, you know, there are four boats here. Well, what is it? Click all the boats, right? May click everything that, that that looks like a bus. You, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And you don't know which one is which. Half the time, you, you always screw it up. Um, but... You know, that's fine. But then down the road, will that be, well, you know, these things, these robots are getting really good at clicking the, you know, the, the bicycle instead of the motorcycle or whatever and recognizing a crosswalk from a sidewalk. <laughs> um, and uh, now we have to hook in your actual digital identity hooked to the, you know, internet computer algorithm blockchain or whatever it is, or, or the CBDC uh, Hamilton Project New US Dollar or something that hooks into all your uh, medical records your your obviously your address your personal information your social security number um your your finances all of this your social credit score yeah and then it's hooked into twitter and that is how you authenticate your human and that of course is authenticated further by your biometric uh you know eyeball or something like that or, or your your face recognition um and, and that is how you sign into Twitter and make sure that you're not a robot. You know, that's the real concern I have. Uh, and, you know, this could, you know, it could it could be something. Like, look, I could just be ranting here. Maybe none of that will come about. Maybe it's just, you know, click the uh the uh, the boats and prove you're 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 not a robot, whatever it is. But you know, if it's something along the lines of, um, oh, we're gonna have free speech for a while, then five years down the road, we're gonna actually take the company public again, and then rescind that free speech again. And now you're hooked into the matrix with your digital ID, your social credit system, and your um, your digital identity that hooks into like a permanent blockchain that you have to authenticate with your eyeball in order to sign into Twitter. So. It'll just be 10 times worse. Maybe. Maybe not. So let's look at some of the specifics of Elon buying Twitter, and then we're going to look at uh, big, fat, Mr. Potato Head, uh, idiotic um, guy who looks like he's 50, but really is only like 36, Brian Stelter, um, complaining about this situation. And this is out of Reuters. Elon Musk clinched a deal to buy Twitter for $44 billion cash on Monday in a transaction that will shift control of the social media platform populated by millions of users and global leaders to the world's richest person. It is a seminal moment for the 16-year-old company that emerged as one of the world's most influential public squares and now forces a string of challenges. 
Musk has criticized Twitter's moderation, calling himself a free speech absolutist, said that Twitter's algorithm uh, for prioritizing tweets should be public, and criticized giving too much power on the service to corporations that advertise. Now, this is a big thing that I actually really hope uh, Elon is a white hat for when it comes to shadow banning, because I've been shadow banned on Twitter the past year or so. I used to get so much more traction like a year or two ago, um, and even then I think I was being shadow banned uh, because... Obviously, if you're talking about the things I talk about, you're going to get shadow banned. I'm shadow banned here on YouTube. I get throttled big time. Um, I mean, you know, it's no secret. You know, I don't have much of a filter when I talk. I just kind of go. Um, you know, I used to actually be pretty good at uh, <laughs> filtering some of the um, the, co the COVID information because after a while, I was so used to making videos on it. It was pretty good at filtering it. So I, I managed not to get banned somehow. You, do you know how many times, though, my channel had two strikes and it was literally one strike away from being deleted permanently? At least 10 times. At least. It's only by the grace of God I'm still here. It really is. I don't even know. Uh, and not even that. I don't even know. Maybe it would have been better if I was banned on, on, on YouTube. But Twitter was actually a little more um, lenient when it came to the COVID thing. And that was something I really talked about. They didn't ban you for it. They just shadow banned you as opposed to uh, YouTube that shadow banned and outright deleted your channel for talking about any sort of alternative narrative on COVID. So yeah, that being said, I hope that gets solved at Twitter. That'd be cool. Um, you know, I'm not really much of a Twitter person. I'm actually better, I think, at making videos than I am posting, um, you know, witty, like, shorthanded tweets. There, there's an art to that. There really is, and I'm not really that good at it. You have to have, like, a high verbal IQ. I just have a really good way of understanding things and, like, being able to predict things and understand, like how the world works, but I'm not as, I'm not that good at typing it out in short form. Uh, so, you know, I'm just not that good at it. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm not even that good really at talking about it, but, but like, I, I think I have, I'm really good at understanding it. So, um, Twitter was never my forte, but, uh, I really hope it gets solved. You know, maybe I'll start live streaming more on Twitter. Uh, you know, if that does get solved, if the shadow banning stops and the outright, you know, deletion of accounts stops as a result of Musk taking it private. I'm not sure. But anyway, going on in Reuters here, political conservatives uh, hope that Musk, <laughs> a Musk, political conservatives help, hope that a Musk regime would mean uh, less moderation and reinstatement of banned individuals, including former president Donald Trump. Musk himself also has described user-friendly uh, tweaks to the service such as an edit button and defeating spam bots that send overwhelming amounts of unwanted tweets. I actually disagree with the idea of an edit button. I don't think there should be an edit button, but I, I do agree with the idea of getting rid of the spam bots. They're absolutely horrendous. You, we get them here on YouTube too all the time. You see half of them on my um, on my videos are either like trying to promote, promote uh, like fake crypto scams or some sort of like, um, you know, degenerate adult content or something. Um, discussions over the deal, which last week appeared uncertain, accelerated over the weekend after Musk wooed Twitter shareholders with financing details of his offer. Under pressure, Twitter started negotiating with Musk to buy the company at the proposed fifty four twenty per share price. And you know why Twitter is forced to do this? Obviously, it's because if they don't, if they turn down this deal, then that could be construed as some sort of legal um, situation where Twitter and the executives weren't looking out for the profit of the shareholders if they refuse this deal, and they could be sued as a result of that. So in other words, like if you're fiduciarily uh, controlling the um, the company of Twitter, you want it to be as po profitable as possible so that people who buy stocks in Twitter make profit. And if you don't serve them in that way, in that capitalistic way to make them money, if you fail to do that purposely, whether your reason is ideological or you have like a conflict of interest, ulterior motives, well, then you can be sued. And they would risk all of the Twitter shareholders um, basically bringing lawsuits if they didn't give in to this deal uh, that that Musk offered. It was a good deal, you know, fifty four twenty for each share. It was selling for like thirty something bucks, like a few weeks back. 
So that's like a really good deal. Um, and for them to turn that down, that could bring a lot of litigation um, and they could all be sued to high heaven. So tw uh, Musk really played his cards well here and, and that's basically what he did. So they had to give in. They had to agree to the deal essentially or else risk lawsuits. Um, and Reuters goes on, quote, Free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy and Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated, Musk said in a statement. Twitter shares rose 5.7% on Monday to close at 5170. The deal presents a near 40% premium to the closing price the day before Musk disclosed he had bought more than 9% of the company. Even so, the offer is below the $70 range where Twitter was trading last year. I think if the company were given enough time to transform, we would have made sustainably uh, substantially more than what uh, Musk is currently offering, said Jonathan Boyer, managing director at Voyer, uh, Boyer Value Corp, which holds a stake in Twitter. I don't think that's true. I think Twitter was going into the gutter. I think, I think it was just not as useful as it used to be, uh, I think it was going downhill. You know, um, I think Facebook is too. Um, I think the only way these corporations, these, um, you know, big tech platforms and social media companies can get back to a profitable uh, future and, and outlook uh, for the, you know, the growth of their company is if they allow free speech. It's that simple. And they open source the algorithm so people trust it again. And they get rid of the spam bots. I think what Musk is offering, if he actually does it, is a good thing. Of course, I don't know about the human authentication thing. Like, what, what do you mean by that, Musk? That's the real question. But other than that, I think it's all good things. And I think it's profitable for the uh, future of Twitter as well. You know, like, that's obviously, you know. Um, but, you know, Jonathan Boyer, the managing director at Boyer, value group i'm sure is uh you know pro <laughs> censorship you know it's probably some sort of china shill he's a china shill <laughs> and reuters goes on to continue however he added this transaction reinforces our belief that if the public markets do not properly value a company an acquirer eventually eventually will um so that's that's about it, you know. That's about it. What do you guys think is going to happen here? What do you think is the future of Twitter? Drop a comment below and let me know. Um, and before we do that, we're just going to see um, Mr. Fatso himself talk about this situation because it is funny to see. I just stay away. What is that? Look, who knows? I, I think that's a, a that's a that's a, an example of a broader question for Twitter, which is, if you. Uh, if you get invited to something where there are no rules, where there is total freedom uh, for, for everybody, do you actually want to go to that party? Yep. Or are you going to decide to stay home? And that's a question for Twitter users. Some Twitter users might love the idea that there's going to be absolutely no moderation and no rules at all. I Others would love might that. not want to be anywhere near that. I hope that is the case. I want 2010 YouTube. I want... 2011 Facebook. I want 2014 Twitter. I want 2022 Gab. That's what I want. 2022 BitChute. Am I, am, I, am I crazy, Matt? No, no, you're you right. Are. What, what happens to the advertising? I mean, if there's no moderate... You're crazy and you literally look like you're 60. How does this guy look like he's 60 years old? He's like, he's like my age or little moderation do the right. advertisers stay away what does that do to the, yeah. the business prospects for twitter itself All i right. think that's very much an, look yeah, who knows I, I think that's a, a, that's a loser he's a butthead and he is a meathead he's a dummy so that being said, let me know what you think drop a comment below will musk free twitter or or will he plug us all into the metaverse within 10 years and we'll all be like neo in the matrix Drop a comment below, like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Gab and become a Patreon member if you can. And uh, also follow me on BitChute, Odyssey, and Rumble because I don't see YouTube going free speech anytime soon and letting go of the throttles on my channel. We'll see though. It's been Press. Keep your head up. Stay real and no fear.